The wonderfully geeky thing about fencing is that it's all about electronics because of the electronic scoring system. You could say that every fencing match is an electric circuit. Now in fencing there is three disciplines, three different weapons with their own set of rules. So every discipline has its own electric circuit to determine if a person has scored or not. Let's look at the weapons. Here they are. We have the saber, we have the foil and we have the epi. Let's start with the saber, simplest electric circuit. You can use the entire blade to score and with this piece you have to touch the opponent above the waist. So what do we do? We connect this blade with a wire to a battery and then to a lamp and then the other side with a wire to a conductive vest that the opponent is wearing, a vest above the waist. Now we have an open circuit. The moment the blade touches the conductive vest of the opponent, the circuit is closed and the lamp will light up, indicating that someone has scored. Something else is going on with the foil. The foil you can only score with the tip of the weapon. So you could say, okay, that's easy, then you just only make the tip conductive. But there's an extra rule. You have to touch the opponent with a certain force. That's why they have applied right here a push button. You will only score if you hit the person hard enough. If you lightly touch the conductive vest of the opponent, nothing will happen. Because of course, the wire is connected to the lamp and everything, but there's still an opening here. Only if the, but if the button is pushed, then the circuit is closed and then the lamp will light up and you know that you have scored. Last weapon is the epi. Once again, you have to score with the tip and with a certain force. So there's a push button here again, but now you can touch the opponent at any part of the body. So there's no need for a conductive vest. Wherever you push this button, it's okay. What does it mean? The circuit now doesn't go all the way to the other player. It's all very local. There's one wire going all the way up. Then you have the push button. There's another wire coming all the way down. When you push the button, the circuit is closed and a lamp will light up. Now the question is, you can of course push the button against the floor and then the circuit is closed, but you don't want this to be a valid point. How did they solve this? Very easy. The entire floor of the area where the match is fought is conductive and is grounded. So there's an electric wire going all the way there to the push button going back down. If you close the circuit like this, then this piece of the circuit is grounded through the floor. If you touch the floor, all the electricity will flow away into the earth and the lamp will not be lit. There's kind of a, a knot gate, you could say, uh, covering the entire floor there. Now this circuit is a bit tricky because everything is so local. So maybe there is ways to close this circuit a bit sooner, like here. That is exactly what Boris Onyshenko did at the Olympic Games in 1976. He installed a small cheat button there and he pushed it himself, but they caught him and he had been banned for life. There, a lot of geeky electronics to watch when you're watching fencing. So one could argue that in a certain way, a fencer is an aggressive light switch.